Uh, hey everyone, it's Red Baker Reiki from Tony72X. Um, I'm a driver and I also build. And I'm gonna be talking about the robot a little bit. So um, this is what we took to Sugar Rush. This is the overall robot right here. Um, I guess we'll start with the base. So with the base, we ran a uh, six motor drive, um, uh, 2.7, five inch wheels and 450 um, RPM. We stacked the, uh, the back motor um, so that we could have more space for the hooks and so that nothing interfered when the hooks went all the way around. Um, the reason we have our gears on the outside here is because previously we had structural screw joints. We had a caps knot on this side and a caps knot on this side, uh, but we accidentally um, tightened them a little bit too much, thinking that that would solve some of our friction issues, but that only made it worse um, because you know, earlier they were a little bit too loose, so we tightened them too much, and then they just kind of messed everything up. So these base, base channels ended up kind of cambering outwards while the inside one stayed straight. And so before Sugar Rush, uh, we kind of like hot swapped the outside C channels, uh, added this full length cross brace. Only earlier we only had a short one from the inside to inside, and also um, added these C channels that were you know fully boxed through and everything. And this kind of really improved the strength of our base. Um, in the future, we plan to go back to the structural screw joints, I think, because you know it's just it provides more structure within the base and can take a lot more. Um, it's just a little a little thing you can do. Um, as for like, you know, the cross braces that I was just talking about, we just added this long one before Sugar Rush. We have the short high strength axle here, uh, two short uh, five wides on each side, and then also um, box L channel to hold up the intake poly and a full length um, high strength axle. And then we also, we store our battery down here. Uh, it's kind of low profile, it doesn't hit the, uh, uh, it doesn't hit the hooks and it keeps the CG quite low, um, at least for, I guess it just you know helps keep the CG quite low instead of having it up here and doing all that stuff. Um, I guess then talking about uh, the intake next. Um, here's the intake. It's uh, boxed um, L channels as well um, on both sides. We've got a pillow block down here, um, and you know just an axle with some flex wheels uh, spaced out. I think this is the second size up uh, for flex wheels. Uh, it's not the tiniest one, but it's I think, the second one. Um, we've got a brace with standoffs on each side. Um, and it's hard stopping on this rubber bumper right here. Um, and so it keeps the intake at a pretty good height. Um, the intake is quite flat, so there wasn't a lot of friction at the start when we started building this intake, but it's gotten a little bit worse over time. So I'll just be talking about some of the changes we'll make later. Um, also on the intake, we've got intake lift, um, it's just a piston, um, just one piston, some zip ties, you can just tune it and add a little click if we need to raise the intake, um, or, yeah, um, and then I guess another big thing is we double chained, ch double chained our intake on both sides, um, so, uh, you know, it took up a lot of space and so when rings were coming from this side, um, at our previous comp, we noticed that this inner chain usually snapped off. So to avoid that, we added uh, this little plastic piece here. Um, and it extends all the way to the end of the, or not to the end, it extends all the way like to here. Uh, got some good mounting points, top and bottom, and it kind of just like lets the ring go to here um, and never really hit the chain, never really broke the chain for sugar rush. So that's pretty good. And intake ramp, it's really low to the ground. It's really flat, but, um, as I said, you know, there are some issues. I don't think we should run this type of intake rant uh, because the the intake um, polys kind of like the bananas where you, um, the ring rides up on like the, the flat edge of the plastic, I think are better. Or a, a sound, like a sort of like counter roller might be better. Um, and so, yeah. Oh, and also this was just to keep the rings pressure down. It was kind of overcomplicated. We used the hinge, there's a lot of weight. I don't think it was really necessary. So this thing will change. That's a thing that will change in the future. Um, and then here, um, we've got our hooks. Um, so here's the chaining right here. This is running on 1200 RPM. This is running, uh, hooks are running on 600 RPM. Um, it's 24 to 24. This also created a lot of friction, I, I believe, uh, with the metal gears. So um, in the future, I'll be changing these to 36s, lower profile. Uh, and hopefully this, um, you know, reduces some friction 
Um, yeah. And also, I might hot swap, like, swap out some of these axles because they might be bent after sugar, and I don't want to, um, you know, risk that for the future. Um, here are the hooks. I mean, they're pretty good, uh, pretty solid. I can run the intake. Um, Yeah, so uh, this band came off. That's where this came off, but it's supposed to push the rings down. Um, whatever. So that's the intake. That's the hooks. Um, uh, we've mounted the um, hook C channels um, by our standoff down here. It's not the best way to do it. You could probably see that it's like kind of bending already. In the future, we're going to add a brace to the bottom uh, and mount the bottom of these um C channels um to it you might actually use l channels too to save weight that's that um and then they are uh, mounted by these l channels in the back so that they don't you know fall down um and also we've got these pieces of poly just to make sure the fifth and sixth ring don't get stuck um also here's our clamp um it's got pretty good geometry thank you to um 2145z for you know we kind of stole this off of them um also before sugar rush our clamp was it wasn't bending but we just wanted to remake it so we just made it stronger uh we added some more um you know like boxing throughout and just made sure it never bent and it looks pretty solid right now so we're happy with it um it keeps the clamp angle uh like really low so i don't have it right now but like this is how it is it's like not touching the ground but it's also just not um like super angled at all so we run into it the hook is like barely about to touch it but it never does um and also another problem we faced that is like in our elims matches or one of our elims matches we got uh, we were sitting in the corner uh with a goal and we got pushed from the front and so this goal kind of got like driven all the way like into our robot so we couldn't really do anything until we let go and we couldn't let go because it was just you know jammed in there so we added these standoffs or i mean these uh, screws uh with spacers um this just doesn't let the goal go any farther um it's good at corner clamping you guys have probably seen this i don't want to go too much into it and it can also you know clamp at weird angles and whatever um we're running one tank um just lighter and we don't really need the air for much more much many things except the clamp really um brains on the side here mounted to this this pillar um and then i guess oh yeah we've also got doinker um it might or might not be a little bit illegal because it kind of clears all four rings but um yeah we're gonna change that i think um oh and then also i forgot intake poly it gets the first ring when you raise the intake it gets the, the third ring so that's good for autos um and then lady brown towers um, they're mounted off of the base, um, like these, uh, seven lungs, I think, uh, it's just the, just the pillow block in here, it's going through, and it was only really till here, until we added the license plates and kind of, like, fully braced it across, um, it, we, the, the bars, like, connect, put the standoff here, so that it's pretty strong as well, and then it's also braced across by a C-channel. Um, for the Lady Brown, um, you know, we've got a rotation sensor. Previously, we were running on two 5.5 watt motors. Uh, I think we had, we had a different ratio, uh, and it was really slow. Um, so we kind of just slapped a motor on here. We were kind of scared that it was going to get knocked, like, knocked off in matches. So we just, we kept it as, like, a full motor. It's not hot swappable, but it never really burned out, so it was kind of chill. And... It's like really strongly on there. It's not falling off and that sugar rush was chill. Um, and then, you know, just, it's just direct 100 RPM. Um, and I'll talk about this part later. It's kind of interesting, but right here is our hang. It's always banded um, to go upwards with this band right here. It's pulling it back. Um, and then when the Lady Brown goes up, hang goes up too. And it's really bent, as you can tell, it's not made well. Um, so we're gonna change this. I think we're gonna use like poly pieces and you know, figure that out. Um, and then this is our Lady Brown ring here. Um, to the original position, as you saw, it was being toggled um, earlier. So uh, 
this is the starting position that you can score on goals and whatever and then you prime it um, and then scoring position is here and yeah so when it's primed something that we have that's you know kind of really interesting to me is um, the trap door we kind of saw this on um, 1028A's like um, wall stake mech where the ring kind of always passes through it and we saw we liked how low profile that was so we did something similar uh, made some plastic gussets um they're just a copy of the whatever gussets that vex comes out with um we just cut them one hole shorter so they're only like this much um and so the ring comes from the bottom it gets locked um and usually with just mesh you know it could get hit out easier but um, with these, it's it's pretty solid, and it doesn't really move like that when you actually use the intake. Um, and that's from afar, and I can do it again just right here. And yeah, so. Yeah, just uh, previously we had it with no mesh. I mean, it worked like really well. Just for security, we added some mesh just just to make sure nothing fell off. Uh, we've got some top and bottom pieces to make sure it gets scored and held when it's up. And then the standoffs on the side were for um, the wall stake auto. Um, it's like the the V cat thing. We kind of just copied it, put a band on it. It's not on here right now, but the ring would sit like this sort of. Lady Brown would go up. Um, it could score in the wall stake just by like sitting here. Um, it was pretty good. We ran it. We had some autos for it. You guys can see that on Instagram, but um, we never really ran the mesh sugar rush because um, we always ran, ran our ringside auto or most of the time. Um, that's the robot. I mean, I guess the thing I'm most proud of is probably the Lady Brown. It's really smooth, really clean, um, especially like the scoring. And so in the future, I think we're gonna keep this. I mean, the torque is pretty good on the 100 watt motor, so it's chill, um, but it just goes on pretty smoothly. We just back up, yeah, that's all it is. It's hard stopped on from these screws onto the C-channel. We thought it was gonna bend, but it didn't bend really at all. So that's pretty good. Um, and yeah, uh, if y'all have any questions, just, you know, let us know, contact us. Um, yeah, thank you.